Hi everybody, my name is Barna Hanula. I am the Dean of the Audi Hungaria Faculty of Vehicle Engineering, so I am responsible for the training of vehicle engineers. And today I would like to show you or to give you an insight into the world of vehicle engineers. What are we talking about? Um, the vehicle or a car is from my, from my point of view one of the most complex products we are, we are producing. Uh, if you want to, to analyze it, to understand it, or to develop it, or design it, you have to, to have ideas uh, regarding mechatronics, measurements, electronics, fluid and thermal dynamics, mechanics, material sci uh, sciences, information technology. It's all technical stuff. But on the other side, if this product is already in use, it will, uh, will give you strong links to, so, uh, to the society, to psychology and, and to the economy, of course. So all these, these topics uh, will be part of, of your education. Uh, but not, not only science and, and knowledge. Uh, what can a university give us? Can a university give us some, uh, some knowledge or competence which can be really used in, in everyday life? And, and my uh, statement, yes, it can. And one of the most exciting uh, ways to give you this, this ex extra are our student racing teams. The student racing teams uh, dealing in, uh, uh, in the Shell Eco Marathon uh, racing series with the solar, uh, uh, solar and battery driven city car, the Arabuna racing team, uh, part of the, of the international formula uh, uh, student uh, event, and the Sengin team. Uh, the Sengin team provides an own designed and, and built uh, internal combustion engine for the formula student. So you can join these teams and learn not only the theory, but the praxis of your profession. And uh, to give you a, a real impression, just uh, have a look on, on, on this time-lapse video. Uh, and you can, you can have a feeling about the complexity and about the amount of work you have to invest if, if you are building up a real race car. So I hope this gave you real, really an impression how many little tiny uh, pieces and, and bits are necessary uh, uh, if you want to create a real functional race car. And just imagine uh, before, before you had to design these parts, you have, had, have to order these parts and procure them. And at the end, if, if the car is ready, you have to organize your trip to the racetrack, uh, you have to organize the catering of, of your team, and you have to organize your presentations for the business uh, event and for the technical events, for the static, uh, um, static events of, of the Formula Student Race Weekend. But uh, if we are learning techniques, engineering, we are all uh, asking questions what the future will be. And uh, humans um, have this, this, let's say, habit that they all, always ma make uh, thoughts about the future. We want to, to invent, we want to, to have an idea, we have, we have guesses what, what could happen, what will happen. And just look on, on these pictures, uh, bottom left in 1936, the ideas regarding the future were, were more mechanical ideas, fancy machines, how to improve uh, the mobility of the mankind. Later on in the 50s, the next picture is already somehow related to autonomous driving. And it is very clearly uh, to see on, on the right picture in 1974, the family is uh, making a trip maybe in the weekend, they, they have a picnic or they, are, they may be uh, playing uh, uh, card, uh, cards or, or whatever. So it's a very clear vision of today's autonomous driving. But in order to have the future, we have the possibility to influence it. And how to influence the future? Maybe uh, through inventions. And uh, I guess Carl Benz, I may say he was a genius. He invented the first motor car of the world and realized it and built it up. But he had absolutely no idea uh, to use it. 
Just imagine, he built this car and it was in, in the garage for half a year. And his wife, Bertha Benz, had at first the idea how to use it. And for me, it was more the beginning of, of real automotive mobility because she, she visited uh, and her parents on uh, and, and the weekend, more than 100 kilometers. And this was a big revolution because it, this, this length, this journey, couldn't be done uh, with horses. It was, it was only to, to achieve with a, with a motor car. And since that, uh, or, or with this, with this uh, the journey, the real purpose of the, the motor vehicle was, was invented. But what, what drives inventions? What drives development? And you can see on this picture, we have many, many different factors and forces. For example, today, sustainable energy uh, sources are very important. We cannot use all the, or consume all the resources of Earth because they, they, are, they are finite. Or the economy, of course, if we, we want to, to produce a, a new product, it mu must be justified uh, economically as well. Of course, uh, mankind needs mobility. It, it's our business with vehicles. But uh, we have to be uh, clear that it impacts the climate. So we have to look for, for climate neutral solutions of mobility. And what happens if the new generation Z and Alpha uh, coming up, they will have totally new habits of learning, new habits of mobility, uh, new habits of recreation, and we do not know it, we can only guess it. And what we know uh, at the moment, uh, we are convinced that more and more people will live in, in cities. And this is a steady proce process and increasing and increasing year, year by year. And the mobility inside the city, it's a big challenge. And in the cities, there are other, other challenges, for example, uh, air pollution and noise. All, all these topics uh, must, be, mm, must be regarded and must be solved by our, our mobility solutions. So, uh, just, just look at a few ways or, or ideas how to, how to uh, deal with these issues. Uh, sustainable energy, let's talk about alternative fuels. If we had real renewable energy like electricity, of course we can split water and gain uh, hydrogen uh, by using the electricity. If we have hydrogen, we can use any source of carbon, even the carbon dioxide of the air, in order to produce e-fuels. And with e-fuels, it, it doesn't matter if it's e-gas, e-methane, uh, e-gasoline uh, or e-diesel, uh, the, the usual uh, combustion engine can be still used. Other way around, the hydrogen can be used in fuel cells or the electricity can be used in battery electric cars. So we have all these choices at the moment. And uh, I have to guess, there is no singular sol solution for every uh, challenge or, or, or mobility uh, task. We will have different ones in, in parallel for a long time. So just, just look uh, one special situation. It's the map of the city of London. And my guess, my uh, prophecy, maybe on a certain day, the major of London uh, will uh, not allow combustion cars in the inner city. What can we do? Of course, there is one typical sol solution to ride a bike. It's okay if the weather is good, but if it's raining and cold and foggy, it's maybe not the best. Uh, maybe for some people, the best solution is pu public transportation, if it's coming frequently enough and, and comfortable and so on. Other people uh, will com combine it with park and ride. So maybe they are coming from, from larger distances, uh, coming near to the city, and they are, uh, they are uh, parking their vehicle somewhere in, in the outskirts and continuing their journeys with, with public transportation. Uh, but there are uh, uh, other solutions as well. If somebody uh, needs his, his car with a long range, a conventional combustion engine car, it may be combined uh, with an e-drive system as a plug-in hybrid. And if, if uh, the battery is large enough, all the distances in, in the city uh, can be mastered with the um, battery electrical part of the vehicle and the longer trips outside the city and on the weekend uh, can be mastered with the combustion engine. In some cases, in maybe some families or persons will decide for a small urban car with pure electric uh, uh, drive system. 
Um, they, maybe they are living in the city and have absolutely no longer trips, or they have a second car for longer trips and this small one for the city. And there might be uh, another solution, of course, a long-range battery electrical vehicle, which is uh, good enough for the longer trips in the weekend and for the city as well. And I am sure in different countries and different cities and in different societies, there is no standard solution. No one of, of these ideas is, is the only idea for the whole world. There will be different outcomes of this story. Uh, let's look in, on one special technology uh, which is coming up, autonomous vehicles. Uh, so we call them already autonomous, they are not yet, but the development is, is really very fast. And uh, why are we doing it? We are doing it because there are a lot of advantages. So we can, for example, decrease the travel time because the cars are uh, communicating with each other and with the city and, and the traffic uh, uh, flow is better. We can reduce the fuel consumption. The computer will drive uh, more efficient than we can do it. Uh, we can uh, de develop, for example, mobility solutions uh, without, with, with uh, driverless cars. So it's not necessary to own the car. It's enough to have the car for the 10 minutes we are, we are uh, riding in, in the city. So we can develop car sharing models and we can exclude the human factor and to increase uh, traffic safety. Uh, it could be a, a very important and huge, huge step. And we can gain time for work, for recreation or whatever during, during riding the car. And co of course, on the other side, we have still ch challenges we are working on. For example, the legal regulation of autonomous driving is not yet solved. We have to work on it. There are, there are technological challenges. It's, it's not yet functional uh, mm, under every boundaries. And of course, we have still the risk that somebody uh, will hack uh, our car and may stop it, may, may destroy it, or may even cause an accident. So we have to avoid this. In the middle, there is a dilemma. Uh, there is no proper answer because some people, they like driving. They are not enjoying autonomous cars. Other people, they, they cannot enjoy driving or they do not like it. They will enjoy autonomous vehicles. So there is, is maybe a split decision in the society. But there are some trends, they are absolutely clear. It's no question. If you look on, on this slide, uh, we can see that a few years ago, a car was more a pure mechanical system. Two thirds or, or, or nearly 70% of the car was defined by mechanics. And the electronics and the software are growing and growing continuously. And uh, we guess that uh, in 10 years, latest in 10 years, 30% of the value of the car, and of, of course the, the, the amount of the work invested in the production and development of the car, is related to software solutions. So it's very clear that it is necessary for every engineer, engineer to develop uh, his skills on, on this area. And now, one of the last slides I would like to, to explain uh, and to, to underline once more the, the complexity of, of uh, car engineering. Let's see, on the left-hand side, we have the challenges already mentioned. On the right-hand side, some options as a solution, a possible solution for, for those challenge, challenges. Let's see climate change. How can we address it? How can we resolve it? For example, we can reduce fuel consumption by developing hybrid cars. Or we can improve the car-to-car -car communication to improve the traffic flow and reduce fuel consumption. Or autonomous driving will do the same. We can develop synthetic fuels uh, with CO2 uh, neutral uh, production. We can improve our combustion engines in order to reduce fuel consumption. And of course, if we have uh, alternative fuels, we have to organize the distribution of e-fuels, of hydrogen and, and of all this stuff. And we are now uh, developing the e-mobility as well with, with the uh, charger infrastructure. So, so many links between one challenge, climate protection and technical solutions. The other way around, just have a look on one technology, autonomous vehicles. Now, automotive vehicles will have an impact, a positive impact on the climate change. 
uh, will have a positive impact, uh, imp impact on, on air pollution, will help uh, in, in the urbanization process, because many people, maybe elder people, they can, can stay mobile uh, with those vehicles without, without a driving license. Um, it will uh, support maybe the new habits of Generation Z and Alpha. It will uh, address sustainable energy as well. So as a matter of fact, as an engineer, uh, you will see you have to deal with very, very complex systems. And this is, is more or less the main message. This is engineering. So if we ask the question again, what will be the future? Uh, my message, it will be decided or influenced by you. And how? Uh, of course, um, at the university, we are all hoping to gain some knowledge. It's the main purpose of education, we think. And I tell you, not. The main purposes of education are the followings. You have to improve your abilities, how to educate yourself, how to, to learn continuously during your, your whole life. Uh, you have to improve your logical thinking uh, in, in solving, resolving uh, challenging tasks. You will improve your ability of solving uh, complex problems. You have seen the complexity of engineering. And uh, you will work in teams. You have to improve your skills in, in learning and thinking in teams. You will Im improve your language competencies because the most literature is available in, in English language. And if, if it is not your native language, language, you have to improve it and you will use it. And at the end, uh, you will put this, this all together in a very, very complex system. And if you find your, a clear orientation in, in this complex system, in that very moment, you are an engineer. Thank you very much and I wish you a good study. Bye-bye.